So in today's web dev tip, we're going to take a look at a few free open APIs that you can use to either build a project or as useful tools for existing projects. So I'm going to run through five different APIs for you to use, and they're all free, some of which require you to sign up, and I'll just point out the ones that you uh, need to register for. Uh, but the first one we're going to take a look at, you may have already heard of it, is the Pokey API. Uh, and basically it's a REST API for giving information about Pokemon. So what I like about the Pokey API is that it gives you some useful data to work with. And if you scroll down to have a look at a, an example of the uh, content that gets returned, uh, you can see for this particular Pokemon, these are all the uh, abilities that it has. And you've got other links to these abilities as well. So there's a potential for you to be able to uh, make a single request to get the Pokemon and then make additional requests to get additional information about their abilities. And also uh, in the data that's returned, uh, you can see if we keep scrolling down here, in the data that gets returned for one of the Pokemon, uh, there's also a sprites uh, property on the object. And this gives you some uh, images that you can use to display uh, the Pokemon on your page. So this is going to be really useful for beginner projects because you've got something to actually display on the page and those URLs are given to you directly here so you don't need to actually go and do any work to load in additional uh, images from anywhere else. So that's the Pokey API. Another API that you might already be familiar with is the Star Wars API and or Swappy for short. Uh, and this one's really useful, again, because you don't need any authentication. You can literally just make uh, requests to this endpoint. Uh, and you see you get some data back a bit like this, uh, giving you information about various different things in Star Wars. And what's really useful about the Swappy API is if you do a search for a large number of things, so uh, if you hit just the people endpoint, uh, it will give you uh, 82 results back. And it doesn't give you all of the 82 results back in the payload. I'm not sure, I think it's 10 or 15 that it gives you back in this results property. But what it does give you is a next property, which is basically just a link to the API again. Uh, and you can make an additional request to that to implement pagination on your app. So this would be a useful exercise for another beginner project where you uh, get an initial payload of results uh, and then you've got some uh, pagination to uh, go through each of the additional pages of results. So check out the Swappy API if you want to set up a project along those lines. Uh, the next API we're going to take a look at is uh, the Movie Database API. So uh, this is basically a database of movies and there are various different endpoints that will give you information about what data they've got stored in there. So you do need to set yourself up with an account and you'll get an API key. And I think if you look on the authentication page here, you can see this is an example request uh, to an endpoint and you need to specify your own API key in a query parameter. So just to give you an example about what some of the content looks like here, if we go down to the movies endpoint, you can see you can get information about movies when you know a specific ID and the response that you get back looks a little bit like this, uh, giving you some information about that particular movie. Uh, and of course you can also search for movies as well. So there's a search endpoint as well uh, and you can search for movies just by providing some text as a query parameter. So again, that's another useful API if you're building a project and it will also give you the experience of uh, using an API key, although the way they ask you to provide it in a, as a query string is a bit unconventional, um, but again, it will just give you the experience of doing that. So the last two APIs we're going to talk about are actually useful tools that you might use in existing projects, or you could build a project around them uh, in isolation. And I think they're from the same company because the user interfaces look very similar. Uh, but essentially the first one is to give you information about uh, your geographical location based on your IP address. Uh, so you can see this is the kind of response that you get back. Uh, we'll give the IP of the user, uh, but also give some information about potentially uh, where they're actually based. So this is only accurate down to a certain degree, uh, but you could use this to actually uh, save some information about a user in a database or potentially change the sort of content that you're showing to them, uh, depending on what country they're actually accessing your site from. So for this service, you do need to sign up and get an API key, but it is free and uh, I believe you can get uh, quite a few requests, yeah, 5,000 requests per month. So there's uh, no reason why you can't use this in some of your hobby projects. 
And the last API is very similar, uh, but this one is all about getting foreign uh, currency exchange rates. And, and again, you can see here, this is the type of data that you get back. So you can give the API a base currency uh, that you want to check and it will give you the rates for converting that into different currencies. And again, we just need to sign up for an API key and you'll have the opportunity to send multiple requests for free uh, whilst you're trying to incorporate this into your app. So you go, there's several APIs that you can get started using for free today and hopefully it's given you some inspiration on setting up some projects and how you might extend existing projects using some of the APIs that we've looked at today. So that's it for this video, stay tuned for more web dev tips.